What's up guys? So we got a new project coming along today. We got this 600 gallon. Got to work on getting it plumbed in. And of course the bottom tile so we can go ahead and get our stingrays back in their proper home. So as you can see I started laying out some white tiles there. And around back here I've got some bulkheads setting out. I think we got it all figured out. So soon, soon, soon this tank will be back up and running. Okay, so you can see how the tiles look in here. I gotta run up to Home Depot and grab some more to fit finish it off. Okay, so you can see the tiles are pretty much laid. I just gotta make the few cuts across the back and the side over here, and then we can start working on plumbing and decoration and getting this tank filled. There we have it, the tiles are now in. Everything is cut tight up to this left edge and the back edge. So now I can basically work on plumbing and start filling this tank up. So for plumbing back here, this is what we have. I've got an inch and a half uh, bulkhead for each one of the big holes. One that's fresh, I'm gonna go ahead and glue a uh, pipe in there. I'm gonna elbow it over and basically drain it right into this dog bone. And then I've got inch and a halves for each side. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug them. I had to buy caps for each one. They can screw on to the inside. And then this one here is just getting a inch and a half cap. So this one won't be used and each end one won't be used. I'll just be using one overflow here and shooting it right over to the dog bone. So the timer has started. I've got this little hose in here filling the tank already. So while this begins to fill, I'm gonna work on the plumbing on the backside. And uh, by the time this fills, the plumbing will be done and dry. We'll be able to put the fish right back in. All right, so we've got the bulkhead going in. Now you just wanna make sure you tighten these down hand tight. Basically, we got all four in now to the same point. Now, the biggest thing about these bulkheads, a lot of people have trouble with, with these bulkheads, and I really don't see the problem why. All you need to do is take your bulkhead, well, you gotta set the pliers first. Take your bulkhead as soon as it's finger tight. You basically just go a little snug past it, it starts getting tight. You give it a couple jerks, and bam, she's tight. You don't need to crank on them and crank on them, that's where you strip the threads and you end up running into more of a problem. Okay, they are all tightened down now. This one is uh, capped off. This one has a screw-in plug. This one's straight through. It's where I'm gonna have my piping and this one also has a screw-in cap. Now the reason I do it this way, I tighten them all down just like that because if you have a nice new uh, rubber gasket on there, you're not going to have a leak. And if you need to at any given time, if you don't over tighten these, you can always go back and give them another quarter turn and stop any possible leaks if they do happen to happen. I've maybe had it happen a couple times and then I just go back and tighten it back up. But if you crank these things down beyond this point, and water gets past this seal because sometimes people will crank them down too far and the seal will start popping out past the bulkhead and you'll never get the leak to stop. Okay, everything's tightened up. The plumbing is in, everything's glued. So this worked out almost perfectly. We got the bulkhead coming in. I've got this elbow butted up to the back end of the bulkhead, coming down, draining into this dog bone. The pipe hooks just on the inside so now the water will come out of the bottom of the pipe and now drain back into the dog bone. So 
So now we have our drip system coming into the tank. It'll fill up, drain to the dog bone, drain out of the dog bone into the drain. Pretty cool. Okay, I added a larger hose on filling this up. You always want to remember, you don't want to fill your acrylic or even glass tanks super fast because you got that expansion of the tank. You want the tank to be able to settle into place and slowly fill. So that's why I'm filling it with smaller hoses and not a two inch hose filling it in just a couple of minutes. So we're gonna let this puppy fill and then we can think about adding some fish. All right, so you guys remember this wood? I was talking about taking it out. Well, now it is that time. Well, that was a mess. That log is super heavy. I'd say it's probably about 150 pounds or so with all the water logged in it. That one is floating right now. It's supposed to sink, so I gotta let that, let some air bubbles out and maybe that'll sink for us. But that other piece of wood's gonna come right over here into the 600. Okay, so I'm afraid I'm gonna have to stop filling the tank here. I still have to do this little tiny patch right here on the corner. So I'm gonna do a plate on the top side and the bottom side, just holding this together. And then tomorrow we'll be able to fill the rest of this tank and get the fish in it. Well, while we're waiting on this wood to sink, this is a good time. You can see everyone in this tank. That Tigrinus is, uh, He's definitely over one tile, probably about one and a half, maybe one and three quarter. So he's over 18 inches, I would say. This uh, planticeps is about two foot. Got that black spotted eel. Of course, you got the fire eel, all the bitures. You've got the little granulosis back there. There was a lot of stuff hidden in here. Them two beautiful weenie catfish, or they're now called Megalodorus uranoscope. But absolutely beautiful. This log is slowly sinking. It's went down just a little bit since I've been here. But now we have the patch on this tank. I stopped fit milling it so it doesn't put no pressure on this seam. As you can see here, I cut the patch to have the same grab on each side. I went ahead and prepped my surface and glued it to it. And then I used this clamp and I'm gonna hold that there overnight. Once that dries for 24 hours, I'll come back tomorrow be able to fill this up the rest of the way and then we can add fish. Okay, the tank's filling once again. We got this patch on here. Everything looks great, so I'm comfortable with filling it the rest of the way. The glue's rock hard, so now we can start filling the tank up and then of course all of these guys can go back into their righteous home. We've got the stingrays, the arapaima, the paraiba, the melanistic alligator gar. So it's gonna be fun moving these guys once again. So the only thing with this tank, we did not have lids. Luckily, we had these uh, little skylight pieces of plastic that Joe from their world gave us and they just so happened to fit these holes perfectly. So I got two of those pieces. We're gonna use that to cover the tops of these tanks so the fish can't jump. It still lets the light permeate through. So we are just about a few inches, probably about four or five inches before this starts to overflow. And we will be ready for fish. All right, the tank is almost full. It is up past the baffles, but you see there, I kind of did something with the weirs on the overflow. I didn't want this huge gap at the top of the tank. I just wanted a little bit. So I went ahead and I stuck black electrical tape on the bottom half of the weirs of the overflow all the way down. So this essentially raises the water level up in the, the tank and it's not permanent. I'm not gluing nothing to the over, overflow box. So I, if I ever want to bring it back down, I can always just take off the tape. That's how we do things here at OFR. All right, so check it out. Tank is full. 
everything's running, everything's good. That's how much water's passing through it for right now, but I am going to take this hose off of it to make things a little bit simpler. Probably gonna eliminate this small hose and upgrade this hose to just one half inch hose pouring it in the back corner. So I don't have to worry about two di different siphons and smaller hoses, I can just do one. So now that the tank is full, I can put some fish back in, but I wanna hold off on the rays and go ahead and put them in tomorrow and make sure everything holds on the tank. So for this video, I'll just grab the big guys for you. Well, there you have the big Paraiba. He's probably closer to 30 inches now that I see him on these tiles here. But he got messed up. He's one of the strongest catfishes for his size. Tell you that, I was scared he was gonna break that 350 gallon. Of course, we got the Arapaima in here and the Tigrinus. He was kind of forgotten about it in that tank. But I transferred the two sensitive ones with the bag so it would be less stressful as possible. And of course, I grabbed the Arapaima with the net. So I'm going to let these guys chill out in here overnight and then join us in the next part and we'll put the rest of the fish back in. Okay, now I want to show you what I was talking about. That catfish came over and snapped these air stones right in half from just smacking them so hard. So there goes two air stones down just trying to fish that Paraiba out of here. But lucky enough, it was just some air stones and not himself or the tank. So I'd say we are pretty lucky. Okay, so catch us in the next video. All these rays will be moved back in. I gotta put the filtration back on the 600, make everything look nice and purdy again. And of course, you walk in and that's what you're greeted with now when you come in this tank. Much better than the last tank, I think. And you can actually tell the size of some of these fish instead of having to play on the reflections of the glass. A look at that beautiful tight greenness. These guys are a bit stressed, but they will start getting their color back here in a few hours. Absolutely beautiful. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more fishy things, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.